How many of us think too much? Mind always racing. Gotta do this, wish I'd done that. We appear to be walking through our daily lives, but internally, our consciousness has run off into the future if you're the anxious type, or it's stuck ruminating in the past if you're someone who holds a lot of anger, guilt, and shame. We can't change the past, and we can't predict the future. Life always has its own unpredictable curveballs. All we can do is stay active in our own present lives where we do have the ability to make changes to create a better situation for ourselves. Remember, Ayurveda is a consciousness-based approach to health and wellness. So step one, cultivate some consciousness. That's where meditation comes into play. Like lenses in a pair of glasses or a snazzy filter on an Instagram story, meditation completely changes the experience. Meditation is like your own personal pocket full of sunshine that you can bring with you into any situation. It's like a ticket to your personal Coachella. Okay. Maybe your Coachella is gardening. Maybe it's building model rockets. Maybe it's doing a sexy naked dance on a pole. You do you. Okay. But do you living in the objective now? So meditation is one of the five pillars of Ayurveda. Meditation is a journey from activity to silence, a practice to train our attention and awareness, an opportunity to de-stress the mind, the unfoldment of our inner potential, and the reconnection with the essential self, being here now. An active state of releasing judgment and control, observing and participating without attachment is how we break conditioned patterns of thinking. Meditation is the antidote to living in a constant state of fight or flight. Whether we are in real danger or not, we could just be pissed off that we had to get up early for a meeting that we don't care about, and we're standing in line at the coffee shop, and somebody takes that last blueberry muffin. Oh, no one's going to die, but goodness, could you tear something apart? When that unconscious pathway is activated, we've already lost. Let's look at that fight, flight, freeze response. When we encounter a situation that we perceive as stressful, the heart beats faster, right? It pumps blood more quickly, blood pressure rises, no bueno. We consume more oxygen and expel more carbon dioxide. Perspiration increases, the adrenal glands, those poor adrenal glands pump out adrenaline, noradrenaline and cortisol. The immune system becomes suppressed, leaving us more susceptible to any viruses or bacteria that might be in our immediate environment. In our skin, the blood vessels constrict, which causes chills and sweating. Our muscles become more tense, trembling can occur, and that tension stays with you, right? It doesn't go away. It becomes that neck ache later. It becomes that low back pain that we carry with us chronically. Your saliva flow decreases, your pupils dilate. In your lungs, your breathing becomes quick and shallow. And in our stomach, the output of digestive enzymes decreases. So that limits your ability to break down food and get those essential nutrients. So your immunity is suppressed, your nutrients are suppressed. You're not getting that oxygen. You are just in all kinds of mess. <laughs> So aside from those physical setbacks, our day is also kind of taken away by that runaway thought train parade that ensues and dominates our whole headspace. They come flooding in and boy, those thoughts just don't stop. So meditation is a practice of halting this runaway train and expanding that silent space between thoughts. And I know I just blew your minds. There is actually space between thoughts. And it's an amazing place. So the space between our running thoughts is one, silent, and two, filled with infinite possibilities. First and foremost, it shows us that we are not our thoughts. You are the thinker of your thoughts. You are the one who experiences your thoughts, but you are not your thoughts. But our thoughts have this tricky, nasty superpower of hijacking our physical bodies, don't they? The body-mind connection is strong. And if the mind is in a bad place, the body will also prepare for a bad place. The stress response kicks in. You could be in a perfectly safe environment. 
and you're thinking about the way someone said something to you and you know what they really meant by it and your chest tightens your shoulders leap up your breathing becomes shallow and constricted you know you get those forehead crinkles uh the jaw clenches pulling the mouth into a frown and all of a sudden you're just your entire body is just under the spell of this thought that just popped into your head and there you go that stress response it makes you so much less productive it cuts your agony your digestive fire and it takes away from sleep. How many times have you been trying to fall asleep and you are just still stuck in that activated state? It lessens your you-ness and your personal power to move through life with ease, making that impact you want. Same thing with cravings, right? All of our unhealthy cravings feed on that stress response. So those addictive thought patterns that, you know, we end up reaching for things unconsciously when we crave help and comfort, fast food, cookies, desserts, cigarette smokes, alcohol, you know, zombifying ourselves in front of the TV. And it all starts with a thought. When I get thoughts like that, I like to think of it no different than a commercial, you know, uh, uh, an advertisement on YouTube, skip ad you know, just press skip ad. It's an advertisement shoved into my regularly scheduled programming. And, you know, five seconds in, I see it for what it is. And I just click that button, skip ad, bye-bye. The experiencer, you can only exist between those thoughts. So meditation is that practice of separating who you are from those pesky thoughts that would lead you astray. We turn our awareness inward to detox all that clutter, all that conditioned thinking that burdens the true potential that we all possess. So through meditation, a beautiful thing happens. The physical body actually drops into a state of deep rest. I know it sounds too good to be true, but it's, it's there and it is yours and it is necessary for healing. Throwing off that stress and fatigue we reset the nervous system, the body is able to re-regulate itself back into balance. Psychologically, it allows the nervous system to regulate so the body is no longer lashing out in anger and fear. This makes space to experience feelings of joy, love, compassion. Relationships improve because your interactions and responses are coming from a place of relaxed presence and not reacting to everything that happened to you five years ago, right? So how do we do it? Well, there's no wrong way to eat a Reese's and there's no wrong way to start meditating, but here are some easy ways to get in. Meditation can be practiced anywhere. Meditation is best practiced in a comfortable seated position with your eyes closed. You should avoid lying down unless you are unable to sit upright comfortably. Use pillows and blankets, some cushions, you know, make yourself comfortable. We don't wanna put any undue stress on the tailbone or the low back, um, but we do want to minimize potential distractions from phones, music, and television. Uh, it does help to meditate indoors if possible because there is more control over climate, light, noise, anything, any external stimuli that might pull you away. Okay, we want to create as little distraction as possible to maximize our ability to turn inward. One way to meditate is through the use of mantras. Mantra is a Sanskrit term meaning mind instrument. It is a syllable or a group of syllables used for its vibration quality. And most often there's no particular linguistic meaning. So it's just kind of a sonic vehicle uh, to get the busy mind to subside to that inner relaxed awareness. This is gonna sound a little basic, but go with me here, cause it works. How to meditate. Sitting comfortably with your eyes closed, gently introduce the silent repetition of the mantra, so hum. So hum is a great mantra to begin with. If you have never practiced mantra meditation, it's a very calming combination of syllables. On the inhale, mentally repeat the word so. On the exhale, mentally repeat the word hum. You get a nice little cycle going. So on the inhale, hum on the exhale. When you become aware that you have drifted away to other thoughts, sounds, or sensations, when those pop up, Gently return your attention to your breath and the repetition of so hum. End your meditation by letting go of the mantra, 
but remain with your eyes closed for a few minutes before gently moving yourself back into activity. Again, a watch or a meditation app to time the meditations uh, is very helpful and always allow for proper time to come out of that meditation. You don't want to rush out uh, and kind of disorient yourself. You want to ease yourself in and ease yourself back out. And it's important when you meditate to do so without any judgment, okay? There's no right way. There's no wrong way. There's just you taking a moment with the intention to connect to stillness. So we want to remember to avoid seeking a particular experience or result during meditation. Approach meditation with innocence and non-judgment. Each meditation is unique and will be best suited for you at that moment, okay? There's no gold medal trophy for best meditator. Meditation is a practice for a reason because there is no perfection involved. It's just something that we return to to connect back to ourselves.